us it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write both these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. <laughs> supplications of thy people, and grant us thy peace all the days of our life. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen.
The epistle is written in the 12th chapter of the epistle of blessed Paul to the Romans, beginning at the 6th verse. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the portion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on our ministry, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation, abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good, be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love, in honour preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind, one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Here endeth the epistle. Sent his word and he led them.
believe in one God. to all a special welcome to our visitors this morning we invite you to join us downstairs in the hall for fellowship and refreshments following the service the holy mysteries are offered to the honor and glory of almighty god in prayer that the sacrament of holy matrimony may be honored by all and, and family life nurtured and respected in our cycle of prayer we pray for the diocese of the eastern united states for their episcopal visitor bishop Actually, that's not true anymore. Uh, this is old. Uh, for their bishop, Bishop William Bauer, for his clergy and people. In our prayers for the church in Canada, we pray for All Saints Calgary, for their, for their rector, Father Robert Short, his assistant curate, Canon Doug Scoyles, and the people. And uh, we remember in our prayers today the sick, the sorrowful, the suffering, and the dying. Commending to God's mercy and care, Sonia Archibald, Sandra Oz, Claude Haywood, Keith Illingworth, Jeff Shaw and family. Jeff is having a rough time. He's in his first cycle, if you would, of chemo. I saw him on uh, Friday night again, um, and so um, going through a rough bout. So keep him and Caroline and the family in your prayers, please. For Emily, Jenny, Jacqueline Bissett, Dan Blanche, Gary Adams, uh, De uh, uh, Deacon Fred and Daisy are still recovering from the flu. It's been a heavy bout for them, so keep them in your prayers as well for all who have desired our prayers and worthy as we are. We continue our prayers for the end of Russia's war against Ukraine. We pray for the people present, armed forces of Ukraine, especially those facing the privations this winter caused by the Russian armed aggression, for the wounded, the displaced, and the dying. We remember in our prayers the men and women of His Majesty's Canadian Forces serving at home and abroad, for the women, men and women who serve as police officers, first responders, health care providers, praying God's blessing and protection upon them and their families. Finally, of your charity, I bid your prayers to the souls of the faithful departed, remembering especially Ethel Nichols, Derek Bateman, Michael Pope Bishop, Maria de Soto, Laureen Buttress, Bob Tabor, and all whose years mind occurs at this time. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord. May they rest in peace. Amen. Holy matrimony is an honorable estate instituted of God in the time of man's innocency, 
signifying unto us the mystical union that is betwixt Christ and his church. This holy estate Christ adorned and beautified with his presence and first miracle that he wrought in Cana of Galilee. I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. As I was preparing my sermon for this Sunday, I found myself reading some rather funny stories about marriage. There's always some. So I'm going to share two of them with you. A grandmother was reading her seven-year-old granddaughter the story of Cinderella. Toward the end of the story, the granddaughter said, I know how it ends. Cinderella and the prince live happily ever after. To which the grandmother responded, Oh no, dear, they got married. <laughs> the second story involves a young curate, new parish performing his first wedding. Fearing he might forget something, he sought counsel from the wise rector. They're always wise. The experienced rector told the young curate everything he needed to do, but he made one final suggestion to the curate. If you forget what you're supposed to say, just quote scripture. The ceremony went smoothly until the curate pronounced the happy couple, husband and wife. At that point, his mind went blank. That's when he remembered the advice, wise old rector who told him to quote scripture. So the only, he quoted the only vo, uh, scripture verse that came to his mind at that moment, Father, forgive them, they know not what they do. <laughs> Marriage is a challenge in the best of circumstances, but it can also be a great blessing. In our society like ours, where healthy marriages are the exception and not the rule, unfortunately, we can build marriages that move against the prevailing tide, marriages with Christ and God's love at the center. Then there is hope for the future and for family life. Nowhere will the difference between Christianity and modern secularism be more clearly seen than in a truly Christian marriage and a Christian family home. By his presence at the marriage in Cana of Galilee, our Lord Jesus Christ blessed and sanctified the union between husband and wife and made that union a symbol of his own mystical union with his spotless bride, the church. From the union of husband and wife in holy matrimony flows the unity of family life, which in turn is the very foundation of human society. Holy Scripture teaches that marriage and family life are sacred institutions ordained of God to be honored and respected by all. And so we read, For this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and they will become one flesh. The man and his wife were both naked and yet felt no shame. This scripture verse from the book of Genesis is in a sense God's editorial comment on marriage. From the ancient story of Adam and Eve, we learn God's plan. One man and one woman joined in marriage for life. A union blessed by God, whose presence and abiding spirit lives within the marriage. In this scripture verse from Genesis, which was quoted by our Lord in his gospel, we find the four essential components of Christian marriage, leaving, cleaving, intimacy, and transparency. Leaving means moving away from the parent's home to establish a home of their own. Cleaving means being together so tightly that no force can tear you apart. Intimacy involves growing together over the years so that, well, you remain two distinct people. In a deep and profound way, you become one flesh. It includes sexual relations, but it is more than that. Transparency means having a relationship built on such trust that you can let the barriers down, allow your spouse to know you deeply, mind, body, and soul. Scripture says to be naked and not ashamed, which means more than, of course, physical nakedness. It means to be fully present to your spouse. It means to be open to the other in a way 
which is both transparent and affirming. In the security of a lifetime commitment, a husband and wife can relax and feel comfortable together as slowly the walls begin to come down. But of course, such is the work of decades, of years. And that's why you can be married for 20 or 40 or 50 or 60 years or more and still, still discover new and loving things about each other, as well as things that may be hard so loving. It is a life process. It is a life discovery filled with love and with struggles, times of happiness as well as times of hurt and misunderstanding, but always in the context of mutual love and a respect born of faith in God and in each other. However, this kind of marriage, Christian marriage, is possible only when there is an exclusive commitment to your spouse. In our culture, we symbolize that commitment with a wedding ring blessed at the time of the wedding. Irma Bombeck wrote that no personal possession has given her more value for money than her wedding ring. She writes, for years it has done its job. It has led me not into temptation. It has reminded my husband numerous times at parties that it's time to go home. It has been a source of relief to a dinner companion. It has been a status symbol in the maternity ward. It has reminded me every day that I have someone who loves me." Unquote. Someone once asked Henry Ford, the maker of the Model T, to explain the secret of a good marriage. He responded, the same formula as the making of a successful car, stick to one model. A strong, sustainable marriage is the work of a lifetime. Well, the fairy tales all conclude with the words, and they lived happily ever after. There is no guarantee of this outside of a committed, loving Christian marriage. For newlyweds, the challenges are immense, and it is simply impossible for them to enter fully into such an intimate relationship from the very start. That comes after years of hard work and commitment growing with each other. I see, sometimes I need to tell couples about this struggle and about the need to remain committed to each other even though it seems difficult. And I know from my experiences visiting many of you, it is in these struggles and in these times that you've often come closer together and been more understanding of each other. There is, of course, the story of a little boy sat through a Sunday school class, listening to this time when Jesus went to the wedding. He turned water into wine, which we heard today. His father later asked him, and what did you learn from that story? And the little boy thought for a moment, and he answered his father, if you're having a wedding, make sure Jesus is there. That's good advice. For without the presence of Jesus in your marriage, life and love and family lack that essential eternal element, God's divine grace. For those who are married here this morning, I invite you to recommit yourself to your spouse, even if it has been so many years together. If your marriage is facing some difficulties, pray for God's healing power to come into your relationship. If you are a widow or a widower, thank God for the good memories, for the love you feel and know in your heart and soul. Know that that love is eternal, that love waits for you in heaven. If you are single, pray for an intimate relationship to fill the void in your heart, praying that God will bring his best to you in his own time and in his own way. To all of us, each of us in our own station in life, let us witness to the love of God, to his divine purpose in Christian marriage, praying for, sustaining, fostering, and mentoring the unique, enduring love of husband and wife in holy matrimony. Let us pray. 
O God, who has consecrated the covenant of marriage, that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Look mercifully upon thy servants who are married, that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their homes may be havens of blessing and peace. And give us all the grace and courage to uphold the holy state of matrimony, instituted by thee from the beginning. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. <laughs> The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. All be joyful and good, O ye lands. Sing praises unto the honor of his name. O
yours may be acceptable unto God the Father Almighty. The Lord receive the sacrifice of thy hands to the praise and glory of his name, both our benefit and that of all his holy church. Amen. We beseech thee, O Lord, that thou wouldest vouchsafe to sanctify these our oblations and to cleanse us from the defilements of all our iniquities. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Let us pray for Christ's holy Catholic Church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with a spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to lead all nations in the way of righteousness, and so to guide and direct their governors and rulers that thy people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace. And grant unto thy servant Charles our King, and to all that are put in authority under him, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially to me, thine unworthy servant, and those bishops in communion with me, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and living word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacrament. Prosper, we pray thee, all those who proclaim the gospel of thy kingdom among the nations. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with me heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all them, who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially those for whom our prayers are desired. We remember before thee, O Lord, all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear. Beseeching thee to grant them a place of refreshment, light, and peace. And we bless thy holy name for all who in life and death have glorified thee, chiefly the glorious and most blessed Virgin Mary, mother of thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and God, the holy patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, St. John the Evangelist, and all thy saints, beseeching thee to give us grace, that rejoicing in their fellowship, we may follow their good examples, and with them be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead the new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul said, This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for, your, for our sins. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee. O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God, Creator and Preserver of all things, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who in substance of our mortal flesh manifested forth his glory, that he might bring us out of darkness into his own marvelous light. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Thank you. mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and it institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue, a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we, thy humble servants, with all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, do make before thee and this sacrament of the holy bread of eternal life and the cup of everlasting salvation, the memorial which he hath commanded. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, 
most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this Holy Communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father, almighty world without end. Amen. Let us pray, as our Savior Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, Son of man, by the word of the Father, and the of his own ghost, thy death is but life unto the Lord. Deliver me by this thy most sacred body, by from all my activities and from every evil. Never cleave unto thy commandment, suffer never be separated from me. The partaking of thy body and blood, O Lord Jesus Christ, which I am worthy to see to receive, turn not to my judgment and condemnation, but that the Holy Spirit may feed you and protect you both the soul and body. We may this in the reigns with the Father and in the name of my God, the Lord with thy name. I receive the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy. Lord, I am not worthy. Lord, I am not worthy. Thank you. 
Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Ghost, bless us, serve and keep them now and always.
Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life.
The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee that thou didst graciously feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, assuring us thereby thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are living members of his mystical body, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. And although we are unworthy, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. Increase, O Lord, we pray thee, and multiply upon us the operation of thine almighty power, that we whom thou hast quickened with these heavenly sacraments may by thy grace be made ready to receive the benefits which thou dost promise. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Depart in peace. Thanks be to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. From this time forth forevermore. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who hath in heaven and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you, and remain with you always. Amen.